What's up, guys? Welcome back to The Garage. Gerald here with you. We're going to do something a little different today. A couple of my patrons hit me up, and they said, Gerald, you got these... You got this movie collection behind you. Like, what, what's going on there? So I said, you know what? I've A couple other channels I follow, I've seen them kind of go through their Blu-ray collection, which is a lot more extensive than mine. I want to say I have close to 200 or so. I actually don't even know. I probably should have counted them for this. And I'm going to go through my Blu-ray collection. I'm going to show you some of these Blu-rays, some kind of hidden gems in there, some kind of obvious ones, especially if you know me, if you listen to my show. But I had some people hit me up on YouTube that have seen some of my videos, and they were like, is that that in the background? And then a couple of my patrons, like I mentioned, wanted me to kind of go through my collection. So I'm going to start with the first shelf, and I'm going to go through that. And then, I don't know, whenever I get around to it, I'll see how many views it gets. I don't even really know what I have, because when I watch movies, 90% of the time, it's not physical media anymore, which is sad. But if there's a movie that I love, like my favorite movie of the year... I'll make sure I buy it. Now, this collection does not include any of the digital copies I have, which I do have quite a pretty extensive digital library of movies and TV shows as well. I'm not going to be including that stuff. I'm just going to go through my physical media. It's also not going to include any DVDs. Those are all inside. I didn't bring them out here with the Blu-ray collection. And it's also not going to include very many kid or family films. I have pretty much the entire Pixar catalog, for example. I have almost all 24 films, I think 23 films, I think, since obviously Luca is not available to purchase yet. We have a bookshelf in our living room, which maybe I'll go through that with Logan someday, my eight-year-old. And a lot of those I bought for him and his brother and even my daughter. When she was younger, I bought a lot of those kid movies. So I do have a pretty extensive family film collection as well. But like I said, that's for a different time. So we're going to start now. I was looking at the shelf here. It's basically going to be the letter A, or I guess numbers, because I do have a few titles that start with a number, through roughly D. So today will be A through D for this episode, and I'll try to do some editing so there's not too much dead silence here for you guys, but let's get into it. Let me grab a few titles off of the shelf here. All right, and going through them, I'm going to try to go through them in order as best I can. So first up is a set that my daughter bought me. She bought this for me. This was for Christmas, I think it was for Christmas or for Father's Day a couple of years ago. And it's a Stanley Kubrick triple feature. And I didn't own any of these with the exception of The Shining. I have a solo copy of that. I did not own 2001 A Space Odyssey. You also have A Clockwork Orange in there. That's a fun one for the family, am I right? And then of course The Shining. Now she bought this for me, truth be told, because she knows this is one of my favorite horror movies. But it's like 10 bucks, man. You get these three classic Kubrick classics in this little $10 Blu-ray set. So that's the first movie we went over here today. Next up is one of my favorite comedies. It's not even opened. You'll see a lot of these are still shrink-wrapped. But it's the Judd Apatow, in my, my opinion, classic. The 40-year-old virgin. Unrated. Again, I haven't broke this open. So I don't really know what the unrated part is. But this movie is fucking hilarious, guys. It's one of my favorite comedies. It's one of my favorite raunchy comedies sex comedies which is an episode i just did with alex from the contrarians which will be on the channel here very soon that's going to be a july episode spoiler alert this is one of my favorites in that genre steve carell hilarious a uh inter getting introduced to seth rogan hilarious in this movie paul rudd psh, can't go wrong with ant-man so yeah 40 year old virgin that's another one here oh not even opened speaking of not opened and this is why is this so thick now I thought, okay, because it is a double feature. So this is an Ace Ventura double feature. You have Pet Detective, which is, of course is the original, one of my all-time favorite comedies. And then you have the sequel, When Nature Calls. It came in this one set. Again, I want to say this was at like Walmart for like $7.95. I got this probably about five years ago, guys. And I had Ace Ventura on DVD. I still do, actually. Uh, both of them, actually. And I just wanted to upgrade to Blu-ray, and it was like 8 bucks at Walmart. So here we go. So Ace Ventura. Am I right? Now we're getting into the good stuff, guys. Look at this. This is an Alien uh, 35th Anniversary Edition. Again, it has not been opened. This was a gift uh, from my wife, I, be I believe. I I'm sorry. It's been several years. 35 years. I have to do the math in my head because this was for the 35th anniversary. This came out, but it's got... Ripley on the front. It's an embossed cover. Very beautiful um, cover art there. This is one of my favorite movies. I've told the story on my podcast before uh, for this movie that this was the first horror movie I saw in inadvertently. 
accidentally. My parents were watching it when I was eight and I crept into the living room where they were watching and I kind of peeked through the bedroom door, watched way too much of this movie, got scared out of my fucking mind. Uh, I'm still somewhat scarred from that experience, <laughs> but I love Alien and this is the 35th anniversary edition blu-ray again it has not been open I need, I need to crack open this bad boy all right i think these are somewhat in order so i grabbed another stack here to go through and i'm kind of putting them face down so i might kind of somewhat be surprised when they pop up and be like oh yeah i own that i can tell this one's been opened Ooh, andrew garfield's i hate the glare on these sorry andrew garfield's the amazing spider-man a film uh they got a lot of shit but i think i think garfield as you guys know if you if you've been on my channel before is an amazing actor and he's a damn good spider-man and he killed it in this movie this is also one of those that's like really thick it has the blu-ray and the dvd in there and maybe uh maybe some extras but yeah emma stone andrew garfield doing their thing also it's always weird with these right because i put it under a obviously for amazing for Amazing Spider-Man, but I should file this with the S's, right? What do you guys think? Does this go under A or does this go under S's with the rest where I assume the rest of my Spider-Mans are? I don't know. All right, uh, next up. Ooh, Ant-Man. Okay, so we'll probably do a double header here. So we got Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp next. Now, these two, I love, the, I, I love this one. Okay, I love this one. My boy Nick loves this one. It's one of my 4K. I only have about maybe 10 or so 4K Ultra HD blu-rays i just got that player recently so a lot of the ones i have are pre me having that machine but my son got this one for me for my birthday i think maybe like two years ago and there's gonna be a lot of like comic book superhero movies in this collection and horror now horror is mostly me purchasing the, that stuff throughout the years but the superhero stuff me and my son share the, our affinity for that the mcu batman like Stuff that I feel like I can show him, I'm, I'm going to show him. He knew that I loved Ant-Man, and he saw this one, and I have, I own this one, obviously. And uh, so he went and got me Ant-Man and the Wasp. This one has been opened. It has been opened. I cracked it open to check out the 4K. And this is a good movie as well. I think the first one is superior, but it's a good doubleheader. You know, why not? Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp. And it reminds me of my son, because he was in the store and this had just came out around my birthday a couple years ago and he was like oh, i would get that for dad he loves ant-man I, I probably wouldn't own this if my son had gotten it for me but that's sweet and i do love it it's 4k too which is great oh all right so now we're getting more marvel it's gonna be a lot of marvel so the avengers a groundbreaking film the mcu ever since iron man in 08 had really been building up to the climax in this film with all the avengers there in the street avengers Class. You're going to see a lot of MCU, a lot of superhero in my collection, which you know I share with my kids, which is great. My daughter was into that at one point in her life as well. And rolling right along, <laughs> Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, perhaps gets a bad rap, but you got James Spader in there, and it does have some fun stuff. The Scarlet Witch is pretty prominent in this movie, and we just got to see her recently in WandaVision. So it has its merits, but it's definitely probably the weaker of the Avenger films. But I still have a good time with it. And if you're watching all of the MCU films, you got to watch it. I mean, there's a lot of pivotal stuff that does happen with Vision and some other stuff in this movie. So it is an important piece to the canon. So Avengers, Age of Ultron. And we're probably going to go through all the Avengers here. So next would be Avengers Endgame because we're going in alphabetical order. See what I did there? So Avengers Endgame, obviously a... This is not the 4K. I thought I had the 4K of this, but I have the Blu-ray of this. This one's been opened. I think I watched a lot of these with my wife, too. I was introducing her to some of the MCU lore and the story of the MCU. Endgame is obviously, again, we were talking about culminations. This was a culmination of 14 years. Like, I, I forgot the number. An, an insane number of films. And then you also factor in the TV shows and the different stuff that's been introduced to the canon since 2008. And a lot of stuff to get to this point. And now they're in the next phase. But believe me, this is going to go down as one of the all-time greats, especially in the, in the world of comic book cinema, Avengers Endgame. And then what do you think's next, guys? Do you, do you know? I knew. And this one's 4K. So this must be the one I was thinking of for 4K. This is uh, Avengers Infinity War. Uh, another one I love. And this, I do prefer this one over Endgame. I don't know if that's a hot take or if people are with me there. But I do prefer Avengers Infinity War. It's just... 
I don't know, it's more action. It, I, you know, it's very similar to me to like the Kill Bill 1 and 2, like argument, you know, because people say Kill Bill 1 is all the action and then Kill Bill 2 is all the dialogue and kind of wrapping the story up. I love them both and they go well together, but if I had to pick one, I'm picking Avengers Infinity War for sure. All right, guys, I got another, another stack here. Now, I am a creature of habit. Some people will know that I like my franchises. I like my go-to all-time flicks. And this is in my top five movies of all time. Back to the future, guys. Now, this is the trilogy. This is what they released for the trilogy in, I believe it was 2010. I think they released this where it has all three movies. It has a beautiful, let's see, I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera very well, but it has all the discs in there. And each disc comes with a um, extras, like special features for each movie. It tells you what's in the special features, interviews, stuff like that. I have watched a lot of this. Um, I'm trying to see if they had a release date on when this came out. Well, if it was the 25th anniversary, then yeah, it was 2010, right? Because it came out in 85. So there you go. So back to the future, the trilogy. Now they are coming out with the 4K of this. Forgive me if that's already happened. I don't think that's happened yet, but I, this is one that I will get on 4K. It's one of my all times. Great price on this Blu-ray trilogy set when it came out uh, for the 25th anniversary. It's one of my all time favorites. Now we're getting into the Batman titles, guys. First up, Batman Begins. There you go. Christian Bale gets introduced as the Cape Crusader in this movie. This movie, I liked it a whole, whole lot. Christopher Nolan kind of putting his, starting his path to this character into this Dark Knight trilogy that we ultimately got. The bookends, not nearly as good as another one that may or may not be coming up here momentarily. But Batman Begins is a good uh, origin story for sure. And it really showed what Christian Bale was going to do with that character. And we got to see that. I thought that you know, it, it kind of lacked that. I mean, the Ra's al Ghul stuff and the Scarecrow and everything, but it just kind of lacked a real, it was more of about the origin of Batman as opposed to him battling any particular villain or villains in the movie, which is okay. But I guess going into that, it, it could let you down if you weren't expecting that. But it's a good movie, Batman Begins. And then we have the superior one from 1989, Michael Keaton as Batman from Tim Burton's Batman, 89. It came in a double set with this one, Batman Returns. Now, of these two, it often gets asked of me, which one do you prefer? And I got to be honest, they are almost literally tied. I, I got to be honest. But if I had to put one on right this second and I had to choose, I would choose, looking at the camera, <laughs> I would choose Batman 89. For sure, it's one of my all-time favorites. I do love Batman Returns as well, though. Michelle Pfeiffer's the Catwoman. Forget it, guys. And then, uh, Dan Brennick of Netflix and Swill, Nick of Nikolai's Kitchen, a lot of other people will be interested to know that this is another one that has not been opened yet. It's Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, and it is the Ultimate Edition. Now, I do want to crack this bad boy open because I do want to give it another shot. And when I do give it another shot for Zack Snyder, and kind of re-watching these films because I did enjoy the most recent Justice League Snyder Cut. I'm going to do the Ultimate Edition. I don't know the differences because I'm not as intimate with the story behind it. But I've heard that the UE is much, much better than what was released in theaters. I hope so because I was not really impressed with what I saw in theaters. But Dan and Nick and several others will be interested to know that I own this. And then I can't wait to open it and check it out when I go through the rewatches of those films. All right, new stack here for you. Let's get into a few other titles. What do we have? Ooh, Beetlejuice. And this is the 4K release of, again, Michael Keaton and again, Tim Burton. But Beetlejuice is just a great movie, guys. Uh, Michael Keaton putting on the performance of a lifetime in this movie, creating an icon in Beetlejuice. And you got a young Winona Ryder in there. You got some great practical effects mixed with stop motion animation. Uh, this is just a great, and this is one that my son saw recently. So it's also a really cool, like, intro, like kind of intro, like kind of novice horror introduction. You know, it's kind of has like, it's adjacent to horror. It has some like scary stuff, like the afterlife, ghost, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's told from such a fun Tim Burton lens that I think it's okay for younger viewers if they're okay with language and stuff like that. Tim Burton uh, has a really cool knack for kind of being able to appeal to adults and children, I feel like. But Beetlejuice is one of my favorites, and this is another one of the 4K titles that I own. Next is a three-movie set that has not been opened yet, 
that I got very cheap, and it's the first three Beverly Hills Cop films. So it's the Beverly Hills Cop trilogy. Now, what's interesting about this is I'm going to be opening it because starting this week coming up, my friend Nick, who I just mentioned, and I are going to be doing this for my Patreon series because he's never seen these films. So he's going to watch one per week over the next three weeks, and then he'll get together with me on Patreon, and we will. Uh, I'll get his reaction. He's not. He's known for not being a big '80s movie fan, but I know that he does love like cop dramas and cop action movies and that kind of stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see what he thinks of this trilogy you know the first one in my mind is a masterpiece classic and i also really enjoyed the second one the third one just fell off a cliff i have fun with it but it's not nearly as good as the first two um like i said the first one in my opinion is borderline masterpiece so i'll be interested to see what my friend nick thinks of this because he typically hates anything that comes out of the 80s from from a film perspective so we'll see but that's the beverly hills cop trilogy and if you're interested in that the information from my patreon is is down below if you want to check it out more marvel stuff how about black panther next so Black Panther is another Blu-ray, and this was a film that really knocked me on my ass, man, because the M- MCU fatigue was starting to set in for me when this movie came out, and I thought this was such a great movie. Uh, Michael B. Jordan giving us a relatable villain, finally, in the MCU, and I thought he just was so good as Killmonger. And then Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, putting on an amazing performance here and really nailing that title character. So this is a great movie. I'll be interested to see what they do with the sequel now that Chadwick, unfortunately, is gone. Uh, So that'll be interesting, but Black Panther has always been one of my favorite movies out of the MCU. I feel bad, guys. It's all MCU, at least till we get to the next shelf, maybe. (laughs) Captain America, this is the first Avenger. Not the best Captain America film, another one that's unopened. You know, with my son and having two sons and then my daughter being into this for a while when she was younger, too, I am almost always going to buy like the Pixar and the family animated films and I'm almost always going to buy the superhero like MCU films because I feel like they really are family adventure films and that we have that comic book connection too so that's why I own a lot of these and they haven't even been busted out yet because I haven't probably haven't introduced them to my son yet so that's probably why but that's the first Avenger which next will of course be the Winter Soldier Captain America the Winter Soldier which is the superior of those two films of the Captain America films this is an amazing movie a really really good movie this is my favorite movie of the quote unquote Captain America films the Winter Soldier and then we have another 4k here oh okay I thought this was going to be Civil War which maybe I'm out of order or maybe I don't have that one (laughs) I thought I did but it's actually Captain Marvel and this is a 4k this is one of the very first 4ks I purchased because it had just come out when I got my 4k player and TV but uh, I'm a big fan of this movie in the MCU and I get a lot of shit for that a lot of times because people think it's a little bit lesser MCU but I had such fun with it the 90s nostalgia Brie Larson I've always loved her she's such a great actress and I thought she killed this role man and set in the 90s her falling into the blockbuster video wearing the nine inch nails t-shirt Come on, guys. They made that for Gerald, okay? They literally, it's like they literally called me and said, what would you like to, us to do with <laughs> Captain, Amer- Captain Marvel? And that's what I said. So uh, another 4K they own as well, Captain Marvel. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up with this stack right here. I have about uh, maybe eight or nine here to wrap up on. And as you can see, if you can read the, ooh, look at that. Look at that uh, holographic. So this is not, this is just the Blu-rays, but this is the holographic Chucky. On the cover there's a really nice cover shout out to patron of mine a friend of mine patrick because he, i can remember him about six months ago when i got this sent me a link on amazon this is the complete seven movie chucky a child's play collection i got it for eight dollars basically a dollar a movie for seven films on blu-ray i don't think there's any digital copies but look at this guys can you see without the glare all seven chucky movies plus bonus features for eight bucks it was like a 24-hour thing that amazon prime i think was prime day maybe and thanks again to patrick for sending me a link for that and this is one that i have not opened yet either but i think this is great because i think this is a series that when logan's maybe like 12 ish or 13 that we might binge this series we might watch all seven of these films it's kind of like an introductory to kind of like the horror icon for him and I do think Chucky's a horror icon. So this is a great set. I don't know how much it is now, but if you want to check on Amazon. This one's interesting. I have a little bit of a story with this one. George C. Scott's version of A Christmas Carol. Now, this was a TV movie 
that came out in the 80s. It was uh, like 85 or 86 maybe. I was probably 10 years old. And this is by far the best iteration of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. This is a movie that I was old enough to remember it premiering around Christmas time on like CBS. You know, because back then you only had three or four channels, and rabbit ears and the whole thing. And I remember this came out around Christmas time and, and it aired right after the cartoon Grinch. And my dad had us watching the Grinch and then we watched this and it was just embedded in my mind. And it was one of those where we owned it on VHS tape after that. And my father had a tradition where we watched those two every Christmas. The cartoon Grinch, Stole Christmas, and A Christmas Carol with George C. Scott. And I've continued that tradition with my children. They roll their eyes a little bit because it is the Charles Dickens literature and, and dialect and that kind of thing. But George C. Scott gives such a great performance as Ebenezer Scrooge in this movie. And the effects for the 80s and also being made for television, so not being like a quote-unquote Hollywood production, are really impressive. It's a really, really good version of A Christmas Carol. If you like that story and you're familiar with that Dickens story, then you need to check out this version of A Christmas Carol. I was able to nag this on Blu-ray, and I love this. One of my favorite Christmas movies. We're in the seas for Christmas. So National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation pops up here. I don't know if I should, this is another one. Do I put this under N or what do I do with this? Anyway, it's under C for Christmas Vacation. I mean, what else do I need to say? The Griswolds, just a freaking blast. Just a dad trying to make the holidays for his family. <laughs> it's just getting overshadowed of all the crazy shit that happens. And I love, love this movie. It's another one that I watch every holiday season, Christmas Vacation. Another one that hasn't been opened and that you can also see the price tag on. Can you see there? $7.99 at Best Buy. Still shrink wrapped. I got this for eight bucks at a Best Buy, apparently. I don't know. I'll take the sticker's word for it. But Coming to America with Eddie Murphy. We mentioned him earlier with Beverly Hills Cop. Coming to America is right up there, too, with being one of his more formidable titles. Everybody knows it, everybody loves it. And the sequel was very, very lackluster this year, but this is an absolute classic, Coming to America. I love this movie. And here we go. This is where The Dark Knight showed up. I had Batman Begins earlier. I guess I'm trying to do the alphabetic order of the thing. So this is the D for T, D, K, The Dark Knight. Uh, the best comic book movie ever made. Right there. The best big screen adaptation of a comic book story. Best superhero movie ever. My opinion. Perhaps a hot take. I don't know. Maybe not. 2008's The Dark Knight. Heath Ledger did something tremendous in this movie. One of the greatest performances in all of cinema history, let alone in comic book movies. And I've already mentioned how Nolan really just created this Gotham, this dark Gotham world for us. Very similar to what Burton did in the 80s and 90s as well, where it was just his aesthetic and you could tell it was his world. It was Nolan's world. And we were just living in it. And these actors really brought these characters to the forefront, made them their own. They were already household names. And now to be able to associate someone like Heath Ledger with an iconic character like the Joker, for example, is just, there's something to be said for that. The special effects in this movie, the action sequences with the 18-wheeler flipping over, unstoppable, unbeatable, singing in IMAX, I'll never forget it. I saw this movie maybe four or five times in the theater. That's how impressed I was with it. And to this day, I rewatch it probably at least once a year. And like I said, one of the better opening sequences in all of film and one of the best superhero movies ever, in my opinion, the best superhero movie ever, The Dark Knight. And from that to this. <laughs> I don't know, guys. The Dark Knight Rises is not the best superhero movie ever. But, you know, I had fun with it. I mean, there's things about this that I enjoy. Anne Hathaway as Catwoman, I thought, was, I thought she was great. I thought the effects continued to be great. The script... Uh, the ending, oh, I, mean, I don't know. The actors, I like Marion Cotillard here. I already mentioned um, Christian Bale in this role, and he really became Batman during this trilogy. His version of Batman, Michael Caine's obviously a stud. We love him. Tom Hardy is Bane. People say they couldn't hear what he's saying, but whatever. He's a great actor. So I thought it was good, but coming off the heels of The Dark Knight, which is such a tough task, just so tough. So it didn't live up to that. But if you're rounding out the trilogy, you got to watch all three of them. The Dark Knight Rises. Getting down to the nitty gritty here. Only got a few left before I'm going to wrap up this edition. It says $19.99 at Best Buy. I think I got it on sale. But I don't know. Back in the day, 20 bucks for Blu-ray was a pretty good deal. Now it's like being overpriced. But Days to Confuse, Richard Linklater, a classic. Another one that would, would rank among my favorite comedies of all time. A time capsule to the 1970s. 
when my dad was around. You know, I've mentioned on my show before that I feel like my dad was like a character in Days of Confused in the 1970s, you know, smoking weed, listening to those tunes. And it's just a feel good movie, hanging out with your buddies in a different time, a simpler time, and a cool time. I mean, it must have been fucking cool in 1976, especially if you go based on this movie. So I love Days of Confused. Another one has not been opened. I think I've had the benefit of seeing this a few times streaming, and I just haven't had a reason to take the shrink wrap off. But um, one of my all-time favorite comedies. All right, how about Deadpool? Everybody loves Deadpool. Everybody loves Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. You know, uh, this this was a cool series because it was like an R-rated Marvel movie. You know, the R-rated series. And because of R-rated things, you know, not because of violence, but because of sex and language and nudity and profanity. And, you know, Deadpool was different in that way. It was revolutionary in that way. And I always thought it was cool because Ryan Reynolds really was just himself with a Deadpool costume on, you know. And he's such a funny guy, such a charismatic guy. This is easily another one that I would rank in my probably top 10 if I had to say I mean I'd I'd have to make that list or look at that list but I would say top 10 top 12 ish quote unquote comic book adaptations I love Deadpool especially this one the first one so there you go and then to wrap us up guys don't make fun of me I love this fucking movie Dirty Dancing an absolute fucking classic this is the 30th anniversary so this must have come out let's see 2017 I must have got this because the movie's from 87 so this must have come out about five years ago for the 30th anniversary I think I have a different copy on DVD in the house but this is the blu-ray DVD digital set for Dirty Dancing Jennifer Grey Patrick Swayze rest in peace one of the greatest romance movies you know it's hard to call this a rom-com really I mean it is funny at times but it's it's more just a like a romantic drama um it's just it was so cool guys just to see just to see these dances and again a simpler time the music was fucking amazing this soundtrack slaps i literally listen to this to this day as if it just came out dirty dancing i get a lot of heat for it but this is easily one of my favorite movies out of the 1980s that'll wrap us up do i have any more d's though let me check yeah i got one more d so i'll go ahead and do that one just so i remember to start on e next time and it is django unchained I have a lot of Tarantino in my collection. This is the first one I think that's come up tonight. I can't remember what I just talked to you guys about. But Django Unchained, a freaking awesome movie. Uh, Jamie Foxx in that lead role, but Christoph Waltz and Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie. Leo, as Calvin Candy, is a fucking madman. He literally gobbled the power up and is running on the Mario star in Mario Kart this entire movie. He is dialed to 11. He never leaves 11. Uh, just a fucking tremendous performance even as unsavory as it is a tremendous performance same can be said for Christoph Waltz it's not as over the top as Leo's but it's also a really good performance and there's just so many great performances scattered throughout this movie mixed in with the awesome Tarantino dialogue and action sequences that we're familiar with so there's some controversy around this film but I love it it's probably like in the four to six four five or six range out of tarantino's catalog for me it's probably my top five if i had to guess Uh, i love this movie and i revisit it often it's actually streaming on netflix right now too because i just watched it a few months ago on netflix django unchained all right guys that'll wrap us up that was our a through d for my blu-ray collection we come back next time i don't know in a couple weeks we'll see how the views are on this thing and i'll do i'll start with e and i'll go to I don't know, whatever the hell is on that shelf. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to do this. I I do all kinds of weird shit on my channel, but it's often centered around movies. So I do trailer reactions, movie reviews. I do prediction videos for award season. I do stuff like this. Video versions of my podcast are going to be on YouTube as well. Please make sure you hit me in the comments down below. What movie surprised you? in my A through D's. Were there any surprises or any that you love so, so much? Please let me know in the comments and please subscribe to this channel as it really helps me out. I'll see you guys next time for something in the garage.